when, if any, would be a case that a stool test would be indicated along with the LRA? And what is your opinion in the new RNA replication test from Biome or the PCR test from GI Map and Genova? Very sophisticated question. When do you want to do not just a stool test for, say, quality of digestion, but one of the new, elegant, and rather challenge, challenging to understand tests, including RNA tests? Now, what is ribonucleic acid? What is RNA? Well, you go from DNA to RNA, you go from RNA to protein, you go from protein to functional cells. So RNA is a really important intermediary in translating our code, our genetic code. PCR, an amplification technique usually applied to DNA fragments. And then after these amplification techniques, after these RNA measurements, after these PCR measurements, after these SNP measurements, after these amplified measurements, a very sophisticated and hopefully smart computer takes the bits and bytes, takes the information, and reconstructs what it means. In other words, reconstructs which organisms are likely or most likely or probably or kinda related to what they find and amplify. And the amplification techniques, a million times is a big amplification technique. A billion times is a thousand times more than a million times. And very often they're multiplying by millions, if not billions, because of the small amounts of material that are there. Now, if the body was an elegant machine, then every little bit of something, when, when accurately and reproducibly measured, and by the way, the, the accuracy, sensitivity, specificity, predictive index of RNA-based stool tests, of DNA-based stool tests, of PCR-based stool tests, to the best of my knowledge, you have very little information about how sensitive, how specific, how predictive are these tests in complex cases. In cases where it's black and or white, you don't need any other test. It's when the clinician, the practiced and, and experienced clinician is unsure they know the immune system has lost tolerance, so they want to do the LRA test first. First line of comprehensive care is LRA testing. But they know that there's a lot of stuff going on in what we call the microbiome or the digestive tract. And there are labs that offer such tests. And since I do not offer such tests in my lab, I think it's fair to ask these questions of those labs. What is the sensitivity, specificity, predictive index, meaningfulness, or wobble, which means it might be this and it might be that. Well, if it might be this and it might be that, and the computer is deciding based on an algorithm, based on a smart system that I know keeps getting smarter each time they update the software, having looked at this data when I was an advisor to the Whitehead Institute, which happens to have worked out the generative grammar of RNA and holds the patents on it, that program stem cells, for example, I can tell you how complex, um, how emerging but not yet clarified is the science, is the meaning of the test results. And so with respect, since I don't have enough information I suggest that people ask the labs that provide these tests the simple questions that every laboratorian should know the answer to about their test. How reproducible are blind split samples? If you take the specimen from the same person, divide it in half, put different identifiers on it, and send it to the lab, how reproducible are those results? How sensitive, how specific are the results? 
what is the blind split sample percentage variance? The impression I have from reading the literature is that variance is somewhere between 15 and 50 percent. And the smaller the amount you start with, the larger the variability uh, on the amplification side, and therefore more uncertainty. And to try and be more practical and clinically clear, I can understand how you could have trace amounts of something that your immune defense and repair system chewed up and spit out and is not a harm or a risk. I can imagine all sorts of RNA fragments released from all sorts of organisms that get all mixed up at the end of the digestive process and end up in the stool in fragmented forms of one sort or another. And I'm not sure how uh, meaningful is the information that comes out of that specimen. Now for full disclosure, one of the first projects I worked on at the National Institutes of Health had to do with the fact that vitamin C above even one gram a day at that time would make occult blood testing, stool occult blood testing, falsely negative. And we published uh, not only that observation, but a methodology that was more sensitive, more specific, more predictive by the Galen and Gambino criteria as they write it up in Beyond Normality, 1976. Um, we were able to uh, work out what the problem was and how to overcome it so that today occult blood screening for early colon cancer is a routine test. But that's different than measuring in the stool the RNAs, the PCRs, the SNPs, the DNAs, the fragments of this and the fragments of that. In physiology, things are coming and going. Sometimes they're on their way out because they're not needed and they're functionally inactive, but they're still immunologically similar to what they originally were. And that can lead to false positives. And I can imagine that you could have fragments that the computer puts back together in the wrong sequence and comes up with a pathogen or a non-pathogen interpretation because you're asking the machine to take the amplified information and tell me what it means to the machine. Doesn't mean the organism is there. Doesn't mean the pathogen is there. Doesn't mean the healthy organism is there. It just means some fragment is there. So very good question, very contemporary question. Um, I do think that comprehensive assessment of transit time to start with in regard to digestive health and stool health, uh, whether what you eat at night comes out the next morning, which is a healthy transit time or stays in for a week, that matters. And there are more conventional uh, anal digestive stool analyses that are okay of course, you miss all the anaerobes, which are the most important organisms in your gut, because any oxygen will kill the anaerobes. Uh, you lose most of the microaerophilic organisms, because they can stand a little bit of oxygen, but not much. And you can look at things like whether pancreatic enzymes uh, are present or absent in the stool. You can look at certain amounts of fat in the stool. You can look for parasites in the stool. Actually, Dean Zert and I developed a technique to float parasites up in a concentrated zinc sulfate solution that had all the schmutz and distracting stuff uh, spun to the bottom. Um, and that, I believe, has become the new standard test for looking at parasites in stool. So I am somewhat familiar with poop. Um, and my bottom line answer is I would ask careful questions before I took at face value the results as reported uh, by labs uh, that do RNA testing, PCR testing, uh, SNP genomic testing, uh, and similar amplification techniques.